Hey guys, welcome to Mosaic. This is a podcast where we have searching conversations. If you are part of Shard Nation, you already know what time it is. It is 6 p.m. on Sundays when we air these live. Every single week, every single week we go live right on YouTube. And that's at 6 p.m. And there's a live chat right down there that everyone's talking in. There's so many people down there having conversations. It's the <laughs> so most many fun. Conversations. Jump in, have a conversation, say hello, make a friend. That's what we're here for. This is a podcast about making friends. That's what we do here. <laughs> is that what it is? It's absolutely what we do. This is a friend podcast. <laughs> we don't have searching conversations anymore. We're about friendship. <laughs> Welcome to Mosaic. When you said Live. that I was like, we need to chink, chink, chink our normal jingle, and then <laughs> I'll be there for you. <laughs> that's copyright. <laughs> when the mosaic starts to fall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, what I was talking no. about. That's what, what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> no, 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 the copyright was the part of the lyrics. I was, I was sad into it. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, guys, thank you for joining in. Today is uh, just our little solo delos of. Me and me and me and Danny here, <coughs> solo delos. We don't have a guest, or do we? Dun dun dun. <laughs> but you'll never know. Um, so it's just me and. <laughs> <Danny>. <laughs> we should have a guest on the show, but just never cut never. to him over here, <laughs> and then you just hear a giggle every once in a while. <laughs> but we but we have their mic muted, yeah. so it's just as visual. <laughs> <It'd be> a- <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> it would be really funny. I would, I would love that. So we have fun here on Mosaic, guys. For everyone who's not part of Shard Nation, we take about 20 minutes to find out what we're actually talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's because we do not plan anything out. We have organic Nothing. conversations. Organic. Sometimes Danny comes in with a little bit of a plan, but he doesn't give me much, and I nothing. don't give him anything. Absolutely, nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. And in I'm fact, okay. if you've been watching, I was on his camera the entire time. <laughs> oh, you were? I was. So uh, that's that's just fun. Hopefully, I didn't show any logos. But we don't they? we don't edit anything, so we don't. That's just going to be a part of the episode now. Um, so thank you for joining. However, you found our podcast, however you are listening to the podcast, or if you're just listening, you can watch on YouTube, like I've said before. Um, but yeah, man, we got we got some fun stuff to talk about. We're wrapping up the year. Yes, it is Season December thirtieth right now, and it is. No, it's not. <laughs> What is today's date? It's, it's October. The 30th. Oh, it is but I was the 30th. trying to October. figure out what month it was. <laughs> like, wait a minute. You already lost count of the month? I already lost count of the month. It's tomorrow's, I just know tomorrow's Halloween. Halloween because AJ yeah. has not let me forgot. <laughs> he he went yesterday to his little his costume. trunk or treat. Yeah, and he got to wear his costume. And so Ruth said he went up to his little friends that were there. And he's like talking all about his dinosaur. And I think she said <laughs> that he told them like sometimes it gets out of control. <laughs> And so, like, all of his friends are like, whoa, whoa. And mind you, these are a bunch of six and seven year olds, like, yeah. looking at this dinosaur costume. Yeah. And then I'm pulling up to school this morning. And I'm like, are you going to wear it tomorrow for school? And he's like, probably not because the tail would like hit a lot of people. I'm like, That's pretty good thinking there. He, he literally He's a thoughtful kid. Yeah. <laughs> but I anyway. love that costume so much. It's hilarious. He did like a little video thing on my phone with it. Yeah. <laughs> From like the dinosaur's <laughs> perspective. It was so funny. He wanted to make a dinosaur video game is what he was saying. Uh, <laughs> so I was ooh, like, oh, hey. Yeah. But yeah, dude, why are we not doing a spooky episode? We should have done a spooky episode. Let's reset this whole thing. <laughs> you have to do that voice for anything You have spooky. to. <laughs> that's, the, that's the mosaic spooky voice. Or just talk about things that are super scary. <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. So you have to, <laughs> that's too scary. <laughs> We don't talk about taxes here. <laughs> yeah. Bruno, taxes, and... Bruno. We don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get on track because, man, we just jump right into we, this thing. We You're like, in. hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm like, what the heck? Are we? I mean, guess we're doing this thing. It's like when you hear that... It's Six Flags, you know, it's about oh, to go down. Oh, it's about to go down. Yeah. It's about to go down. No, um, you called me... Just before we hit record, and gave me a sentence. A name. Do you want to? Do you want to set that up? Yeah, I can set that up. Yeah, set it up. All right. So, Shard Nation. I told uh, Sam a while ago because he's right. We don't ever uh, get ready for an episode in the context of like planning these things out, which is pretty cool. You know, like this whole year wrapping up season one. Since we're kind of at the end, we haven't. Um, yeah. We haven't really done this at all, and it's been a huge 
a stretching thing for me, which is good because it's good to have that kind of like no context and trust Holy Spirit of oh, hold what on. we're going to talk about. How do you feel about that? We've almost done a full year. I know. A full year of this, of unplanned I know. episodes. I know. Well, if you remember back, I encourage y'all, go back to some of the first few mm-hmm. episodes that we did. And uh, low-key, I was like freaking out on a lot of those. And when Sam was coming up with like this whole vision of what he had in his heart of like, hey, we're going to do this and Mosaic Life and like, this is what's going to be, da, 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 like this whole vision casting he did. In my head, I was like, heck yeah, this is going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. In addition to that, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to talk over 15 minutes. That's true. Remember me saying that? I remember that. that. And I would like speak up and be like, dude, I don't know how we're going to do this. He's like, no, we're just going to have a conversation like what you and I usually do. I was like, dude, we usually talk about stupid stuff. (laughs) And we still do that part. And we still do. (laughs) But then it's like... I had somebody say it to me the other day. He said that he's seen our progression and our journey over wow. this past year. And he said that y'all are deep wells and God is actually calling out of those deep wells, you know, really, really good things. Kind of like he's stirring up deep, deep wells? Like, I don't know, like stirring up deep, deep waters. So like we're going to dance? Like in that river that's coming out. If I could show you a picture of that kid, I would. <laughs> <laughs> no. For context on that for our shard nation, <laughs> he has this creepy kid that he shows me a picture of. And it's just this kid, a normal kid, but doing this weird it, face. It, it's from like some music video about that anyway, song. Anyway, that you if made the mistake kid, of telling me that you did not like. Stay in school, kid. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so you literally were freaking out about like not being able to talk more than fifteen minutes. Yeah. You're like, I'm just going to hit this wall yeah. <laughs> and stop. And then you found out you're human. Yeah. And when you hit walls, you keep going. Well, you said... Hashtag so, Tom Holland. Hashtag... We can't say that word. <laughs> what word were you going to say? The S word for is coming out oh. because it's copyrighted. Miter spy. <laughs> <laughs> you're, so, you're so dumb. so <laughs> dumb. Miter spy, because then my brain went straight to like miter saws, and like it's a journey of this construction worker who becomes a superhero. <laughs> miter saws, and he like throws them. He does throw those. It's it's scary, dude. <laughs> but then like this guy that trained him in construction dies, but he gives him his special miter saw glasses. <laughs> we have a whole origin of this. We gotta make this movie now. But I'll tell you what, it's guy, still gonna be better than Wadam Meb. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're dancing on that line. Oh, I like dancing. <laughs> Gosh, boy, <laughs> Weg Haggams was a terrible movie. I still can't get over it. I don't know how they're recovering from that. They're not. <laughs> There's <sighs> not. They canceled movies because of that. They need to. Yeah. Where were we? Oh yeah. Okay. So honoring you in. Uh, when we first started off in these episodes, because I know we're making a big guys, just bear with us because we're going to come all the way back to the uh sentence that I posed to Sam Full this circle. afternoon. But when we first started on this, Sam released a lot of things, and this is why we always say stay in community. So you have that uh thing, Sam and I love to say, mm-hmm. uh, things that are held in tension. Yes. And you said when we we're first beginning this, uh, I was like, well, I don't know if I'm going to be like tapped out at 15 minutes. I don't know if I can talk more than that. And then your your response to it was, okay, then we do a 15-minute podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I was like, well, that's not what our goal and da 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 He's like, well, no, the goal is to have searching conversations and the, this, this, and this. And if we get there, we get there. And if not, we don't. Exactly. And it what that did was like took this whole pressure off. Yep. And then now we have comments that are coming in like this week where people are like, we love what you're doing. Do you have the comment? We don't have I to do. say his name or we could say his name. I do. It's somewhere around here. Hold on. Sam is looking for it. I was going to let y'all know because Keep when talking. Sam sent this, another rabbit trail. Man, we got all kinds of rabbits in here. We got bugs on bugs. But oh, where's your phone? I, I ain't getting out of this spot again. You can just... Oh, this is fine. I did text it to you. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. <laughs> well, Sam and I, we've been pretty open with this pod of like making sure that we're reaching y'all out mm-hmm. there listening right now, making sure that um, 
we're getting inside of vehicles with you and at the gym with you and all these other yeah. places of where you maybe wouldn't listen for encouragement, but we're trying to be encouragement in those places. And Sam and I were just having those real questions again of like, what does 2025 look like as we come out of season one? Yeah. And we had a business meeting with Ruth, myself, and Sam, and we're sitting in my living room and we asked the question, okay, 2025 is coming up. What does the last month look like? What it, which we're going to talk a little bit toward the end of this episode of yeah. what's coming y'all's way. But uh, what Surprise. is this? Surprises are surprises. Surprises. <laughs> But what does 2025 look like in 2026, and what do our uh, Shard Nation look like going forward? And so anyway, out of that conversation, we were thinking, do we keep pressing on this and keep right. going? And the answer was yes, so I'm not holding y'all in like suspense. We're, we're going to keep pressing through. I really wanted you to hold them in suspense a little bit longer. Let's, let's go back. We may not get to <laughs> No, they already know. <laughs> okay, they already know. <laughs> the last season of Mosaic is happening yeah. right now. The last season of Mosaic no. is not happening. Because we're going to keep going until Holy Spirit, it's like we're in this journey and Holy Spirit has said, hey, we're going from point A to point B. And Sam and I and Ruth came together. We're like, okay, where is point B? And Holy Spirit has not released us from that yet, saying, hey, we're not there. And this was even further confirmation. Um, should I say the name? Um, let's we'll just leave it off. Yeah, we'll leave it off because we'll it, it wasn't off. a public comment. Yeah, it was a message, but it was. And I'm going to give a just kind of a quick overview so I don't uh, destroy their privacy because we really encourage y'all. Please message us. Uh, tell us if you want to talk about a certain content or something like that. Yeah. Or uh, this is why we love having Ruth on here and other women like Kirsten was last week when y'all uh, listened in because we want to have other perspectives and we want to have a woman's perspective on things that are going through because Sam and I, as much as we try and tune in in our... We're not women. We're not women. <laughs> we have not made that decision yet. Joking. I'm stepping on toes. And yeah. Anyway, but no, seriously, we want to hear everybody's perspective. But he said things like, This is changing my life. Um, I love you. <laughs> I'm trying to go back through the. Is literally changing my life. And I can't imagine a life without you guys now. Stay beautiful. But he was talking about Kirsten's um, testimony yeah. last week yeah. when she was sharing deep cuts and hurts that she experienced from when she was 14. Yes. Like yeah. she was going through some atrocities at 14 years old and she opened up on the show. And because she's doing that, because Ruth is opening up, because Sam is opening up, we're having people listen in a week, two weeks, a month later, like my dad, he'll, he'll get these episodes later, but it's blessing people. Yeah. It's, it's really having an impact. And so that just furthered our resolve Almost as if we got like a second wind and it was like, no, we're going to continue on with this. Yeah, because I think we can be vulnerable and honest here. Like we were kind of hitting a wall of just like, is this doing what we thought it would do for the kingdom? Is this achieving what we're setting out to achieve? Yeah. Um, or what? Or is this hitting the, the target that we felt was placed for us to be aiming at? And um, I was feeling very discouraged about it and just like okay like I don't know I don't know because I think like my my view became more number based yeah and it was uh I lost that and which is this is a pattern in in like even when we first started yeah because it was easy for us to start saying like oh the numbers will be what they're going to be like this is our vision yeah and then like a few weeks maybe a month in we were already going back and yeah. being like oh man like it's not hitting where we wanted to hit yeah and so like that that level of feeling like a failure came in and that was coming up again for me and um and just saying like man it's not it's not the the impact that i thought we would be making but yeah. that's not a bad sentence yeah like I don't think that you're ever going to hit and, and make the impact that you want to make um, because your life is going to impact in ways you never thought it would impact. Yeah. And I think that's the same with this podcast. It's it's making impacts that I never thought it would make. Yeah. And that is uh, just amplified whenever you guys do reach out and you send messages. You can send messages on Instagram. You can uh, actually, you can comment if you're listening on Spotify 
there's a way to comment now on every on every episode. Um, it used to be like a Q and A thing. Yeah. And it would be like, what did you think of this episode? Yeah. And then they just opened it up to just being comments. So like, yeah. you're able to like, if you're listening to this, please leave a comment, <laughs> leave a question. If you don't want it to be public, you can reach out to us on Instagram. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you want. Do you want to drop your Instagram handle? Or do you want? He doesn't like being. I don't even know what promotional. Instagram handle is. Oh, never mind then. <laughs> We're not going to do that then. We're dropping our home addresses though. Thanks you can so. reach Sam. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, you thought uh, I was <laughs> you're like sure. I was gonna not. match. I was gonna match. I was gonna say no, actually my address doesn't give you your address. <laughs> Man, we were locked and loaded. <laughs> I was ready. I was going. We were playing chicken. Honestly, I don't even We were know about to do this a address. Just, Jonathan and Sophie get married. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know it's a county road out here. I have no idea where we are. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah, anyway. that's true. It's literally it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> But, um, yeah, just all that to say, like, this, we still, we still don't know what this podcast is. Like, we still don't know, like, it's still an amoeba to me. Like, Mm. it's still forming. It's still adapting. And I love whoever thought that we started off on a really sucky road and just, we've now gotten better. (laughs) <laughs> it's what I, I heard. What you define as better? No, <laughs> um, that I love that people are acknowledging like the progression of it. Yeah, and say like, oh wow, like it did. Like you guys are further along, and if you don't mind me bringing it up, go for it. I'm freaking proud of you because after our first episode, you were you were a little insecure. I was, and you want to talk about that? I was super insecure. Um, I've lost weight since the first episode. And so uh, it's eye-opening when you get on a camera and you're like, what in the heck? I did not know blue whales were in East Texas. And Sam and I looked at it and I was like, all right, it is what it is. And um, anyway, so. Well, like, so it's, it's very interesting to me because like when I was on the basement, like I, there's something about it that I just wanted to get healthy. Yeah. Like I was, I was sick and tired. I was sick and tired of how I felt. I was sick and tired of how I looked and I wanted to get healthy. And so like that started my journey into walking and like doing all that stuff. And so mm-hmm. like, it was really interesting to me to see you step into that and kind of I take like, the same kind of path. And dude, you've lost so much weight. It's like, you look amazing. Today. Thanks man. So I vitamins. just wanted to acknowledge it. <laughs> vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C. Let's try to do <laughs> the song. Just go into the song. No, I'm not going to do the song. It's a terrible song. That's a great song. All right, so all of this, man, that was a big round way to get to, used to. I would flip out, but then driving over here, called Sam, and I was like, this is what I've been chewing on for two days. Uh, I guess it was mid-morning yesterday I was thinking about this, and I posed the sentence to Sam, and I said, "Um, what does this look like, or what did I say? abandonment to God and to community. Mm -hmm. And I just left that one sentence to just kind of resonate in your heart. Because what's... All right, so here's what's floating around in my head, and then I'm ready to take this journey with you. Sweet. So abandonment to God Mm -hmm. and to your community. I was thinking it takes trust and vulnerability. Yeah. And... We have gauges inside of our life, and some of these gauges are uh, like if you're dysregulated, uh, you may lash out and be you know more upset over little tiny things, and right. then it's not that it's that little tiny thing that William came up and jumped out just to kind of scare you or something like that, and you go off on your kid, and it it, it goes back to you had a bad day at work and this this right. and this, and it just compounds until you explode. Yeah, and so where I was going with that is. If you are abandoned, excuse me, let me go back. If you're not abandoned to community, are you not abandoned to God? Mm. Is what I was searching yesterday in my thoughts. And then, so let's take the word abandoned, and I want to go down the words of like trust and vulnerability and whatever you're feeling in your heart, Sam. Because I'm thinking, okay, if I have a hard time trusting people in my community, and when I'm saying community, I'm meaning Sam, Ruth, I'm meaning yeah. Jonathan and Matt and Casey, like all like these people in our community. If I have a hard time trusting them and being vulnerable to them, 
am I also doing the same thing to God? Or if I'm doing this to God and have a hard time trusting God, yeah. is it going to overflow into my community? And then the thought I had after that was like, what do we do about that? Because you can't stay there. It's one thing to see right. the issue and not do anything about it. It's another thing to, you know. So what are your thoughts? Um, I love I love the question of if you're not abandoned to your community, are you not abandoned to God? That's a really interesting perspective. Yeah. Um, because I think that God, if you go back through the Bible, there are seasons where Jesus isolated mm-hmm. and seasons where he was in community. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not willing to step into the community and you think that you just need to do a road of isolation, I don't think you're abandoned to God mm. because that's not what was modeled for us. Yeah. He didn't just do it alone. Yeah. And so that doesn't mean there isn't going to be a time where he isolates you. Yeah. And total abandonment to God is going to look like you're holding things flat in your hand and you haven't gripped anything. Yeah. And if it's like, oh, these are my friends, thank you, and you close that fist around your friends, yeah, that's not abandonment to God because now he can't move them out. And not everyone is going to remain in your hand. Not everyone's going to remain in your life. Yeah, There is a purpose. There is a season. There's a time for it. But he's got to be the one that moves it in, and he's got to be the one that moves it out. And it, I've always said, like, it comes from, I, I heard it, I don't know if it's originated from JB, but I heard it from JB, so I'm going to give credit to JB. The what's meant for you is coming for you. Mm. And that, you you take that and you go to the other side of it, what's not meant for you is leaving. Yeah. And so I have taken the mindset of there's a lot of pain that's caused in our life when we try to cling to the things that are leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not just be open handed to yeah. what's coming. And I have felt that in many aspects of my life. Um, and I think that it's very interesting the dynamic that you were talking about of does it bleed over into if you're not abandoned to God, does that start to affect how you're you are with your community? Yeah. And I would say yes, because I've noticed that even in my relationship stuff, dude. Like I currently, as I sit here today, I have a hard time trusting God in my relationships. And that's just mm. me being honest and being vulnerable. I talked a little bit about it with uh, Jonathan and Sophie's episode. Yeah. And um and I know and like to to jump into like what you said at the end, well, I'll get there. Um I've noticed that it, it affects how I behave and how I interact now even with you and Ruth and like that kind of stuff. And so like I, I'm very mindful of this now and now getting into what you just said about now that you're aware. And I think that, I don't know if it was on a podcast or if it was off a podcast that we were having a conversation about where I, I made the statement that, um, knowledge bears responsibility. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't just know something because once you're aware of it, once you have the knowledge of it, now you have the responsibility because whether you were walking through your life in an ignorant or a naive way and you were unaware of something that you did, now that you have become aware of it, it is your responsibility to either adapt and change that or now you're willingly walking into that and saying, no, I understand how I operate and and that this is my pattern, but I'm going to choose my pattern today. Mm-hmm. And that's I like you can't un, you're no longer in the in the dark on it. You you are actively making that decision now. And so like because you have this knowledge, because you have this awareness, there's a responsibility now mm. to do something about it or not. But mm. your decision now is not it's not going to be a subconscious decision anymore. You have to actually make that decision Mm. because if I'm a constant liar and I didn't know that lying hurt people, maybe for whatever reason I was in a delusion about it. And then I find out like, Oh, this actually hurts someone. Yeah. Am I going to continue lying now? Am I going to continue 
down that path. And if I do, I'm choosing to hurt someone now. Yeah. Versus just being like, oh, I didn't know. Like, I'll. How do I stop now? And go on that path. Go go on that journey yeah. of like learning, or rather unlearning. Yeah. A pattern or a habit in your life. And so, like for me, I'm aware now, like that I have this this tension that I'm holding with God and like the voice and I know this is a lie and I'm still sitting in it and I'm still wrestling with it but the voice that I hear is that he doesn't care about my relationships Mm. he cares about all my other aspects but he doesn't care about my relationships Mm. and so and I and I understand that's that's extremely hard and harsh thing to say Mm -hmm. that's genuinely how I feel I don't think it's right. Like, I don't think it's, it's the truth. I, in fact, I know it's not the truth. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the feelings that I have when I think about, and I go through my past relationships. And so, um, there's a lot of tension there. Now it has brought a, like a level of numbness, I think that I've, I've wanted to numb. And I've wanted to run and I've wanted to hide. To protect yourself from To protect myself. Pain. Yeah. 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 And it's like, so. The the picture you gave, because I want you to go back into that, because mm-hmm. it, it was interesting just a little bit ago when <clears throat> you took abandonment, the first picture that came to your mind, because you immediately did it, you said, it's this, and you held your hand open. Yeah. And so, like, if we ask everybody in Shard Nation, like, what does abandonment look to look like to you in one sentence? Right. And it, a lot of us, or maybe I want to hear some of y'all's thoughts, actually, you can put it in the chat, but, like, it looks like an open yeah. hand. Yeah. And when you're describing that right there, well, God has all this parts of my heart except for this one thing. It looks like an open hand with one finger back holding something down. Mm. And that one finger yeah. is what I'm talking about. It's so, it's seemingly so insignificant, but it's like that one finger right there is what's affecting like probably 95% of the issues that we're running into right. within our community. Right. And it's like, the, if if you don't give God everything like this, and you hold one thing back like that, that one little degree, like you've said several times, like just playing golf because you love golf. <laughs> <laughs> but like one nth of a degree at when you hit the ball, like what is it, like 500 yards away, it's off by, I mean, you know all this because of your history. Yeah, golf. yeah, because of how much <laughs> golf I play, yeah. No, I'm tracking, yeah. But, yeah, you're tracking with me. So, like, that one thing that we do right here that we say, well, God, I want to give you all of this, and I want to abandon myself to you, except for I don't feel like you're really faithful in my relationships, and you don't really care about my relationship. And then that little thing right here, 500 yards down into a relationship with a woman or another person or something, that's where we see the ball is off 20, 30 yards. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right, and it's like, I like the I like the 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 visual of holding back one finger because real practically, okay? If you were to place something in my hand, yeah. And I hold down or let's say you place a few things in my hand and I hold down my finger on one of those things. One thing. My hand is now compromised. It's not a stable platform for the others. Something's yeah. going to fall. Right. Because I'm so concentrated on not losing this one thing. Right. And so not only is it an unstable hand and and everything else is at risk of falling off or getting hurt. Um, if you were to play something bigger, I wouldn't be able to hold it. Right. And so now I'm not able to support the things that I am holding yes. and I'm not able to receive what you honestly want to give me. Yes. And so it's kind of like a stalemate. It's like God wants you to get to that place, and he's the one who's faithful yeah. enough to gently hold your finger and be like, let's open this up, because he's also the same God that says, you know, when you're faithful in little things, if you're yeah. faithful in the little, he gives you more responsibility. It's, it's a wonderful thing about the kingdom. You know, <laughs> you do really good with a little bit of work. He's like, hey, let's give you some more. Yeah. But... That's what it is as far as stewarding relationships. That's what's hard is that if I don't steward relationship with God, 
and this is what was going through my head yesterday and today, I'm like, if I just even hold back a little bit, he, I don't like saying the word like God can't do something because God can do whatever the heck he wants. Right. God would not be faithful if he did give you more because you can't handle it. And you can't handle it like this, like what you just said. Well, let's wrestle with God can't. Ooh, I'm ready to wrestle. I got the oil. God can't not be there. Mm. He's omnipresent. Mm -hmm. So he can't not be there. God can't step outside of his character. It's proven time and time again. Yeah. So there's things he can't do. Mm. But is it a matter of ability or not? I don't think it's a matter of ability. It's not about our of ability. No. <clears throat> and so but there's something to there's something to um the the tension of you can and you can't, right? Like um well I I, I want to say it differently now. Okay. It's interesting. Um, God could bring a billion dollars right now to our front door. Mm -hmm. He has the ability. Right. His choice to not do that does not lessen his love, if that makes sense. Yeah. In fact, it makes me feel a little bit more secure in it to know you're not just going to give me what I want Mm -hmm. or what I think I need. There's security and boundaries is what I'm trying to to highlight. Yeah. So like the uh, what was the original statement that you made? The abandonment to God and no, the um, uh, the God can't statement. <clears throat> I'm saying God can't talking about being faithful and few and giving you more. God can't give you more when your hand is like that, yeah. holding it with, yeah, one thing held back. So then the tension of that is, he could, mm. but he won't, because he wouldn't be a faithful God. Because he wouldn't be a faithful God, and he understands the value of what he wants to hand yes. you, and he doesn't want that compromised. Yeah, it's not that. He loves you less. Yeah. It's not that you're not capable of it. You have to get yeah. to the place. And this is why yeah. he That's could good. force that finger open. That's good. And mm-hmm. strip it from you. He won't mm-hmm. because he loves you. Because he loves you. And love that is under the guise of control is not love. Mm-mm. If it is forced, <laughs> Duh. it's not love. Right. He's never going to force anything. Yeah. Because he's a gentleman. And he's patient. Yeah. AF. Can you say and that? I can say that. The bleep word is... Uh, <laughs> I don't have my censor, us. but <laughs> that was me censoring. I bet you he is. Yeah. He'll He'll wait. He'll wait till a generation gets ready. Mm. Whoa. I felt that one. You you said something just a minute ago, and I'm trying to go back to it. Um, because you said, with the hand held open, mm-hmm. but one finger back, God wouldn't give you more because then he wouldn't be faithful to do that, even though you might in your own ability could do it. It's still God's, be compromised. It would still be compromised. I took that when you said compromised, because that was the key word, like a chihuahua one about onto that. Yeah. You, I think, perfectly just described what burnout looks like in the church. Wow. Because when you compromise, I, I need to say mm-hmm. it a different way. When you take your hand before God with whatever ministry context that God's given you, within your job, within your family as a husband or a wife, within um, a a relationship as a son or a daughter, whatever it looks like, and you have this 
look, we're going to keep this is our new yep. sign for uh, non abandonment. I like it. Non abandon, unite. <laughs> <laughs> when you go like this, you compromise the relationship and it causes burnout with whatever God has given you to steward. So yeah. if I walk into pastoring like this, and I'm like, God, I trust you in all these other areas, but this one thing I can't trust you in, can't with quotes on it, Yeah, um, I've at that moment compromised what God wants to use me in in that situation. Yeah, Because then it's like I have grace for all these other things around me except for that one thing over here I don't want to talk about. Right. <sighs> and with that, dude, now that has me wanting to recalibrate that we were we're saying the wrong word. Okay. What do you got? It's not can't, it's won't. Expound on that. When I say I can't do this, I won't do this. Mmm. A choice of your will. It's a choice of your will. It's it's Eek. I won't trust you because I feel pain. I don't want to mm. feel pain. I won't step forward in that because I'm scared. I don't want to be scared. Bro. So we say I can't, but it's not an actual can't because we physically can. Yeah. And we can do just, just before we started recording, Daniel agreed that he's going to do a cold plunge. And so like, that's a great example, Daniel. That I did you would, not agree with that. Absolutely. Absolutely did not. Because you take a cold plunge you you step into it. You're immediately your mind's telling you you cannot do this. Right. You can't do it. And it's because of the heightened level of temperature. It's the or the decrease, I guess, the yeah, lowest. Yeah. But it's a heightened level of pain. Yeah. There's a pain that steps in whenever you first step into a cold plunge. Yep. And your body says, your mind says, I can't. Yeah. But it's not true. It says get out. You won't. Mm. I won't do this. You can, because I bet you I can stay here for seven minutes. Mind over manner. Exactly. And then, so now you apply that to relational pain. Wow. You apply that Ooh. to Now we're stepping on community toes. pain. Dude, keep going. Like, can you not or won't you? Can you not in a relationship that you've said you can't to years ago and remember that sam and i are never talking about abusive relationships things like that yes but let's take the context of maybe uh an estranged friend or an estranged parent yes because you had a disagreement like we're coming up in holidays like when was the last thanksgiving or christmas i'm speaking to some of y'all out there in the community that y'all had this disagreement years ago and you said well i can't talk to that person i can't mend uh what was said because there's so many hurtful things that were said or will you not and that's what the bringing it full circle around again because I want to keep hitting this. Like, are you not abandoned to your community? And I'm not talking about in an abusive way or an unhealthy way. I'm talking about what does healthy abandonment, which right. we've established, looks like this. What does this look like in every single relationship that you step into? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, because we will never tell you to step into an unsafe environment with an unsafe person. Yeah. That's not what we're saying. What we are saying is, are there relationships that you have stepped out of because they were uncomfortable and they hurt or disappointed you? Ooh, yeah. Or said something that you didn't necessarily agree with? Yeah. That may be. And this is why we are laying it on pretty heavily. Like, don't step into a situation with an unsafe person. Yeah. But if the Lord is trying to tug at your heart and say, give him another chance, the initial reaction is going to be, I can't. Yeah. Because of the pain, because of the disappointment, because of the hurt. But there's... He's saying it for a reason. Yeah. He's saying it for a reason. There. I'm trying to think of how to say this because I don't. Like, I just really want to hit again. Like, if they're an unsafe person, don't do it. Yeah. It's not. That's not all what we're, we're trying to communicate. Um, I'm trying to think of a really good example. I'm trying to think of, like, 
there's certain people that have been inside your life that really have cut you deep and that it is an unhealthy place inside of this lifetime where you can ever reconnect with that person. Yes. Uh, whether it was an area of uh, mental or physical abuse or, or something like that, and we're not saying to reconnect with that person. What we are trying to say is that those people that are in your community that are a part of your body, yes. that you have to see the value of those people um, you have to see the Jesus in those people, even though they may be a butthead, and you right. don't want to connect with those people. Right. And sometimes those people are in your family, and you're just like, I really don't want to talk to this person. I don't want to hash it out with these people again, to which I would respond, mm. but how can you view the Jesus in that person if you're never around that person? And what I mean by that is we're all part of the body. Like yep. Sam is a toe, and I'm the toe on the other foot. And like... Every single part of the body has a purpose and a design for something specific. Yeah. And until you get in community with that person, you'll there are facets of God's face that you will miss in this lifetime unless you're with those people. There's facets of God's face. Thinking of John and the, uh, Jonathan and Sophie that were here on the pod a couple of weeks ago, there are things that I would have missed inside of Daniel's life had I mm. never met them because right. I was able to see them coming out of terrible pain and suffering and all these things. And then now I'm able to praise God. I don't know what the word is better. I can praise God better now, or I have more revelation of God's goodness because of you have a wider perspective, a wider perspective. What I'm saying is that I want to pose the question to you all is how much do you love God? Yeah. That if I love Ruth, my wife, as much as I do and say that I do, do I still want to pursue her and know every single thing about my wife? Or yeah. do I want to say, no, I want to stay surfacy and I only want to know about this much of Ruth and that's it. Because yeah. if you really do love your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, then you are obligated to go after those people because you see more of God in those people. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it makes sense because God uses people more than I think we give credit to. Yeah. We might say like God uses people whenever we hear a really good story yeah. or like an overcoming story. And we'll be like, yeah, God uses people. God uses people who kind of get under your skin. He's using you with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I picked on you. That was just totally uncalled for. <laughs> I just had to throw that zinger in there. It was perfect. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, they irritate you. They 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 challenge you. Yeah. They're you might abrasive. have to use a little bit more patience with these people. Yeah. You might have to be a little bit more understanding with these people. Yeah. And that's still God using them. Yeah. And so... Because you said it best. What was... Say for the Shard Nation, the sand thing you talk about. You said when oh, you can't... I think you talk about a jar or something. Because I have a thing in my mind of you talking about abrasive people, but it's actually a good thing that God uses them inside your life. With sand? You, oh, you say sand in a jar. Yeah. And capacity... About fitting more yeah, yeah, sand. Yeah. So like you can take rocks and fill a jar and yeah. it's a full jar. Yeah. And then you take sand and you pour sand in. And then it's really full. And it's still full jar. And then you can take water and pour water in it and it's still a full jar. But you're still adding more to a full jar. Yeah. That one? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> or the other thing about sand is like the sandpaper. Yeah, but you said something that's impactful, even though I can't think of it, because you said people are like sandpaper or something. Yeah, it's got you got to smooth out the edges, and it takes some. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I ruined it's it. It's okay. No, you're no. It's fine. This is what we do. We have searching conversations. Where we're searching for that memory. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a memory in a minute. Yeah, tell me about it because I'm interested. Life I don't know. is like a bunch of sandpaper. <laughs> you never know what grit you're gonna get. <laughs> I think is that's what you said. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. When I was sitting on that park bench, we sit on, on the bus talking about <laughs> sandpaper. That impression was perfect. Thank you, and we don't have to edit that out. No, it's a movie. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I'm very careful now of what I can say and not say on a podcast. <laughs> He's learning, guys. He's learning. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I'm sorry. I derailed no, you. No, you're for fine. A no, it's it's the 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 idea though is that uncomfortability. I, I think we spend too much time trying to avoid an uncomfortable situation mm. when that uncomfortable situation is the only thing that's going to help you grow. That's really good. And it's like if you actively are avoiding being uncomfortable, if you're actively avoiding pain in the sense of relationships. Just call it a plunge pool. In the context of a plunge pool, if you're actively... Go with that one. Yeah, if you're wanting to exit the the situation, right? Because your mind is screaming at you, you're we can't do this. You can't do it. It's too cold. Get out. Get patient. Okay. Don't make any snap decisions. That's good. And get curious. That's good. Because if there's someone who, like, they haven't wronged me, they haven't hurt me, but I just don't like them. <laughs> mm-hmm. If I get curious about their life, it's impossible to find love for them or to not find love for them. Yeah. If I'm like, hey, so why why do you do it that way? Or why do you say this this way? What What is it, what is it about that? Mm-hmm. And I sit there and I listen to them. Or like, hey, where are you from? Like where'd you how'd you how'd you end up here? And you get into someone's story? Yeah. It's almost impossible to not find love for those people. Yeah. You get context, you get love. That's good. And it's just like we gotta get curious. I think that the the plunge mindset will tell you they're wrong. But why do they think that way? Why do you think that they're wrong? Mm. What if there's a perspective that we're just not seeing, which is why we have these conversations that we're having? Because maybe I'm wrong. Mm. And if I take that route first before you're wrong. Yeah, that's good. And I get curious. I'm like, maybe I don't understand. Maybe I'm the one that's that's not hitting the mark here why do you do it that way why do you say it that way why do you believe that way and it's like there's probably perspectives out there do we don't even know and we're not saying compromise values no by any means don't uh, do not murder okay i'm not going to compromise that value but okay why do you feel the need to murder Mm -hmm. no and all right so let's take it very very simple for the season that is very real to us right now Because next week is election day. (laughs) You're such an idiot. (laughs) But no, like, as you're saying that, like, we do a very... Can can we say the P word? We do a... Political? Poor job. I was going to say piss poor. Oh, you can say piss poor. Okay. Beep. (laughs) You don't have to beep it out either. All right. I don't think piss is a bad word. Call it what it is, dude. It's a piss poor... Piss. Job. I'm saying it. Saying it for the rules. Confident. No, uh, say the F word. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, where I'm going with this is like we do a piss poor job of staying curious and having searching conversations mm-hmm. with people on the other side of the aisle. We have Democrats and Republicans and some people that are grassroots in the middle, mm-hmm. but it, we've missed an entire half of the country that like if we had such a stinking problem with um, I'm getting off track here, but just hear me out. Go, go. If we don't have searching conversations, we're going to have people on the other side of the aisle that you're like, well, I disagree with uh, immigrants or border control mm-hmm. and all these other things. We'll hear their freaking heart. Yeah. Because then if we take it down to where you're just like, no, we're not going to let anybody in, yep. no immigrants, nothing like that, you just killed Jesus. Yes. Well, what do you mean, Daniel? Well, let's go all the way back to Egypt. What if the people in Egypt said, no, I'm sorry that your son is going to get murdered, but you can't come into our country. Yep. Except they said it in Egyptian. And yep. I can't speak Egyptian. 
I was trying to what? do an Egyptian accent. I can't think of an Egyptian accent. <laughs> it's okay. I was it's just going to go best. like this. <laughs> but if you think about that, like yeah. if, and I'm, please hear me, guys, because I'm sure we're having Republicans yelling on the live chat right now. Well, I'm not saying don't build a wall or build a wall or anything like that. All I'm saying about right now is like, if I don't talk to somebody and hear their heart and they're like, no, some people are fleeing their country. Can we please just let them in and give them mm-hmm. sanctuary and let them feel safe? Yep. Okay, I can have that conversation. Yep. I'm not saying I'm going to compromise values. I'm saying let's just talk to one another. Yes, it's a conversation. It's a conversation. And we miss it because when you go down that path, the first thing that I see that leaves is you don't see people anymore. Ooh, you see an argument. You see a Republican or you see a Democrat. Yeah. And you don't see a person. People. They're a person. They're not. And it's... <laughs> and that's the thing. I think... I think there's a lot of Republican churches out there. Ouch. I think there's a lot of Democrat churches out there. Preach, man. And... You're not going to let a Democrat into a Republic church. They're not going to feel comfortable there. Yeah. So when you take these hard stances from a platform that should never be based on politics. Yeah. How many times did Jesus talk about politics? I think it was once. And he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Yeah. He talked about values. He talked about uh, a different completely kingdom. Because he talked about his kingdom of heaven, his father's kingdom, and the way that those values and a lot of the things we see in the church today yeah. line up zero with yep. the father's kingdom. Yep. And one of them would be I've ser- shared this openly at our church now, so I'm not you know yeah. taking people off guard, but um, I have a license to carry, and in the state of Texas, uh, God bless Texas. I love my state, yeah. and I love open carry, and I, I have this revolver I carry. I love that too, but God's changed my heart in the past couple of years where I, I'm not saying I'm democratic. I just like start seeing now. I'm like, I start to see other people's hearts yeah. on gun control. Yeah. I carry. I'm carrying right now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm what I'm getting at is that the firearm that I have, mm-hmm. if I actually had to take somebody's life, mm-hmm. it, it throws this whole new thing on it of like, am I ready to decide someone's fate in eternity? Right. And then I start seeing the other side of the aisle, and I'm like, well, man, I've really got to keep an open mind and be like, this is a, an immense responsibility. Yeah. So. No, and and that's dude, that's a perfect example because it's like. This was something that probably years ago you would have never even thought you would compromise or like think differently on. Mm. And and maybe that's like the thing. Maybe we need to change the verbiage of it. Maybe it's not a compromise. Maybe it's just a wider perspective. Wider perspective. And it's you are now considering things you didn't consider before. Mm-hmm. And both yeah. are true. Both are true. You are a responsible gun handler. Yeah. And maybe you're not ready to take a life. Yeah. Maybe you're not ready to make that decision. And it's like, we're so black and white on so many things and not saying like there's a gray area or stuff like that. I'm saying like, but there's a whole spectrum of color that we're not fully seeing. And there's, I think ultimately, okay, I'll just speak from, from me. Yeah. My goal in life at my funeral when you're up there speaking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'll be speaking because I'll be dead right next to you. <laughs> we're probably going to go up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the likelihood is, is pretty high that we're both, we're both gone at this point. But, <laughs> sorry. Um, I want people to be able to say Sam Byers loved people. Mm. That's one of the first things, if not the first things out of people's mouth about me that I would want said. He loved people. And it didn't matter which walk of life they came in Mm. or where they were on their journey or what circumstances put them in whatever situations. 
I want to love people yeah. the best that I possibly can. Mm-hmm. And I believe that was modeled by Jesus. He loved people so much that he gave his life for them. Yeah. And we tolerate people. Mm. I think as a, as a, I don't even, dude, I don't even know. Like if we're talking a national perspective, I don't even think we tolerate people. Mm. Like if you were going to average it out, I don't think we tolerate people. Mm -mm. If you take a broad perspective of the church, I don't even think we tolerate people. Mm -mm. Like more times than not, Christianity is partnered with judgment and hatred than it is love. Yeah. And so with knowledge, with awareness comes responsibility. What are you going to do to go against that perspective? What are you going to do in your life to show a little bit more love Mm -hmm. and not just tolerate And if you're hating, definitely move towards toleration. But if you're just tolerating, move towards love. Ultimately, start reaching that end of the perspective. Yeah. And and it doesn't mean compromise your values, compromise your morals. Right. But it does mean acceptance. Like, I can accept where you are and who you are today. And still love you. Yeah. No matter what that is. And I don't have to. I don't have to sit here and try to prove I'm right in my theology or in my beliefs or in my perspective. I can still, you know, it doesn't take much to be a decent human being. Like just to be decent. It doesn't take much, dude. It's pretty easy to be a decent human being. Yeah. But there's a lot of people who are not decent human beings on a daily basis. Like, I, and you, I mean, you're just rude. You're rude to your yeah. waiter. You're, you're rude to your waitress. You're rude to the guy that's changing your oil. You're rude to your freaking doctor. Like. You think they owe you something? Yeah. When you were saying tolerance, I was thinking, <clears throat> man, the the challenge. I think because it's we have probably a small percentage of hate in this country. I would guess if I were doing percentages, I would say like five to ten percent, or five to seven percent hate. And you may disagree on Chardonnay. Should be like, well, no, we have a lot of hatred in this com- or this country. And I would pose the thought of like. I don't think people really know that level of hate. Like 5 to 7%, I think, really do hate one another in this country. I think there's a vast majority of like 60 to 70% of tolerating. And that's what we're seeing right now with the elections. That's what we're seeing right now just in our communities. Um, Like a picture of tolerance is like having something present and ignoring it. And that is almost more, it's not, but it's almost as devastating as hatred of something. Because at least when you hate somebody, you acknowledge them, and you're like, I have a hatred toward whatever this thing is. Tolerance is like you put M&Ms in your popcorn, and you just eat the popcorn (laughs) and ignore the M&Ms. Yeah. Because it's disgusting to do that. (laughs) Sorry, I just had to bring it up because it's so nasty. (laughs) It's the best way to eat popcorn. (laughs) It's disgusting. (laughs) But yeah, you just tolerate people inside this country. Oh, okay, you you exist here at this time, and so I'm just going to put up with you and then hope you never talk to me. And that's not love. No. And we see a lot of tolerance in the church. Yes, we do. And dude, I like that you took the perspective of maybe tolerance is worse than hatred because if you hate someone or you hate something – You're not going to put yourself around it. Mm -hmm. Tolerance brings them into your proximity and you still ignore them. 
Mm. So like you don't even give them the benefit to not be around you. Yeah. In you fact, like you might be you. forced to be around mm-hmm. them. Yeah. And to be tolerated is draining mm-hmm. their life. So this whole searching conversation coming back to the first two things we talked about with God and community, I felt like it took trust and I felt like we've tackled trust really, really good. I want to discuss why is it so hard to be vulnerable with people and vulnerable with God. And I don't want to paint vulnerability yep. as a... Um, say how I want to word this. I don't want to paint vulnerability as a weakness. I want to paint yes. it also as um, a strength. Absolutely. So why are people, and in my mind right now I'm saying people, but I'm thinking specifically uh, it seems like in our older generation that uh, our older generation has such a hard time of vulnerability mm-hmm. and then... Um, our younger generation is kind of watching that and moving into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you touched on this the other day. I keep seeing these things you touched on. You're like, <laughs> you know, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. No. But you said a pretty scary statistic that uh, World War II, there were a generation of fathers that said that they weren't going to show emotion. And mm-hmm. I know I'm butchering this, but if you know what I'm saying, just give me a thumbs up. Yeah. And then you said, all right, so do you want to take it from there? Talking no, about going. the statistic now about this generation and how it's scary. Talking about relationships. Talking about relationships. Yep. But maybe and take parenting. it with a twist of vulnerability, like Absolutely. in our context, of what's scary about the generation coming up right now. Absolutely. That you told me. Yeah. Go for it. No, so um, in the 20s, it was a... 1920s. A parenting... Yeah, not the not the 2020s. Not the current 20s. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the current 20s. Dude, we're in the 20s. I mean, it is, though. Uh, you'll you'll see the parallel. It's, it's, pretty, right. it's pretty wild. Anyway, keep going. In the 1920s, uh, it was a parenting tactic to not coddle your kids. Mm -hmm. Do not show too much affection. Do not show too much love. You're weakening them Mm -hmm. by by making them dependent on you. Mm -hmm. And they're not not becoming self-reliant. And that generation grew up and they became the stonewalled... I don't have emotions. Yeah. I don't have feelings. Our grandparents. Our grandparents. They're the alpha males. Like, men don't cry. Yeah. Kind of Especially mindsets. in baseball. Especially yeah. in baseball. And um, that obviously is something that people are aware of now. It's like, oh, hey, this isn't, this isn't good. Yeah. It's not healthy. Yeah. This isn't how human beings are or how they should behave. Um, think about even photos back in the 20s. Deadening your, your, yes. Like yeah, if dude. you look at all those black and white photos, I've seen like one of them where they actually smile, but every one of them is just stoic. like stoic. Mm-hmm. Even the mom, even the kids. Yes. It's just like everybody's yes. in the photo. Don't right, keep going. I cannot be, I cannot even express my emotions yeah. in any way. Right. And so then you have the creatives who awoken and, you know, all that. Yeah. One and we got art. <laughs> we got art. We got artists. We got poetry. We got songs. The Beatles and yeah, and it was like you, you. Those are the expressions of your emotions. Those are the expressions of yourself, and yeah. like they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. In relationships today, in the twenty twenties, that is how we are with one another. If I'm pursuing a relationship with you, the mindset today in 2024 is don't let you become attached to me mm-hmm. and I can't become attached to you. So silence my emotions, silence my feelings, silence my desires, silence everything. And it's that stoic image. And so my question whenever we were having this conversation was what is that going to look like in a hundred years? Yeah where we saw now the generation that grew up with that as toddlers in a very physical way, yeah. in a very real relational way, what is this going to look like? Because we do not want to express feelings, express love, exactly. or admit our our vulnerabilities with one another. Yeah, uh, Brenna Brown 
has an incredible statement that I absolutely love when she talks about vulnerability. And she asked many people to define vulnerability. And ultimately it came down to one sentence. Vulnerability is strength in you and weakness in me. Mm. And that's what we believe. If I'm vulnerable, it's weak. When I see vulnerability, that's strength. If you tell me your story of you overcoming something or being vulnerable, I perceive that as strength in you, mm-hmm. but I cannot perceive it as strength in myself. When I choose to step in to be vulnerable, when I choose to open up about something that I'm struggling with, when I choose to wrestle with something that I'm just like, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. You have peeled back the bone and the cartilage and the muscle to reveal your heart. And it feels very scary mm-hmm. because infection can happen. There are multiple things that can attack. Like yeah, you're, you are in a compromised state. You are vulnerable. Yeah. But it's beautiful. Yeah. Vulnerability is beauty. Like the most vulnerable people that I know personally are just the bravest, most beautiful people in the world to me. Yeah. And to step out and the, the, the imagery that I have comes from a guy named Kevin Smith, who I don't really necessarily like his movies, but I like his mindset and I like how he talks about his movies. Um, and when he was talking about like the first movies that he made, he said, I was starting a conversation and I took out my heart and I put a flashlight in it and I projected it on a screen and I asked, do you get it? Mm. And that to me is the most beautiful image of vulnerability. It is me taking out my heart, putting a flashlight behind it and projecting it and saying, do you get it? Mm. Does this resonate with you? Do you understand this? Yeah. Or am I alone? Good. And even if I'm alone, I'm still brave enough to turn that flashlight on mm-hmm. and to project what I'm feeling and to project what I what I see, what I hear, what influences me, what inspires me. Vulnerability is bravery. Yeah. We just call it weakness because we're scared. And you can be scared and brave. Yeah. In That's fact, good. I don't know a single person who's ever been brave that hasn't been scared. Yeah. It does not negate their bravery. You aren't brave unless you're scared. If you're just walking into a battle numb, I don't think that's brave. That's Mm. not bravery. There's something psychologically wrong. Yeah. You're not aware. So like it doesn't, it doesn't, makes sense to call that person brave they don't whether they're walking into a room alone or walking into a battlefield it makes no difference in their minds yeah when you're scared and you do it when i know that you have the ability to leave me if i have this conversation with you Mm -hmm. and i still choose to have that conversation that's good that's bravery yeah that's vulnerability and not controlling not trying to manipulate you to stay with me Mm -hmm. and giving you the freedom to leave. Yeah. That's bravery. Yeah. Vulnerability, as you're saying, that is just strengths exposed. Yes. Vulnerability is here. I'm bearing everything that I have that I have strengthened inside of myself. And when somebody sees that, how vulnerable you are, they can also see the the shortcomings, yes. the weaknesses. And the thing that I see so much today is that people put on facades and call it vulnerability, yep. and they're never exposing themselves at the risk of them getting hurt inside of a relationship. Yes. So when they step out from a friendship or a some kind of relationship or whatever it is, and they step into 
this relationship with God, they put on that same facade, except God sees right through it. And he's so gentle in the fact that he takes his time slowly like an onion, peeling those layers off until he gets to the root of, okay, now we can talk about this hurt that you have. But he doesn't do it to expose a weakness. He exposes the thing there to strengthen you even in what you're already strong in. He's like, okay, this looks really good. Let's make it even better. And I think people are afraid of that. And hear me out because I'm not picking on the older generation. I'm just saying we've got to be careful because of what you just said. This generation coming up, um, we can't close ourselves off to other people. We can't close ourselves off to God. We can't be in this stoic thing of thinking, okay, if, as long as I don't show emotion or let people look too much behind the curtain, then I'm going to protect myself. And really what you're doing is you're hurting yourself because it's going to get to a point sooner or later where you can't take any more of the lies. You can't take any more of the uh, fake, um, what is the the filters. You yeah. can't put any more filters on your pictures. It's yeah. this is what I am. Right. Or you have like what we've had months ago when I was on the show here at Mosaic and I just broke because mm-hmm. it was like I I wasn't vulnerable with people in my community. It was yep. I'm going to carry this burden yep. until it kills me. And it literally was killing me on the inside until I just I was on the show and I just broke. And that's where we are with a lot of people that are out there listening right now is you think you got this Mm -hmm. and you don't. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because when you are not vulnerable, you have turned yourself into a pressure cooker. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you are just cooking yourself and not allowing yourself to vent, not giving you the air to breathe. It just compresses, 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 compresses. Yeah. Until you either break or you die. And that death could be the death of your emotions. That death can be the death of your dreams, your aspirations. Doesn't mean you physically dying. It means that you have disconnected. Yeah. And now you are disassociated with your surroundings, your relationships, your self. Yeah. And so vulnerability is necessary. It's a necessity. Yeah. Otherwise you're cooking yourself. That's good. I didn't have anything on top of that. I was trying to think. I feel really full right now because I've had this thing, and I'm. I thank you so much for exploring it with me. Because, like I said in the beginning, since yesterday, I just had that question inside my gut. Maybe it was. I mean, definitely it was for the podcast. I don't know why I'm saying maybe, <laughs> yeah. because it's like I woke up with this thing, and God was saying, "Okay." <laughs> Like, what does it look like to abandon yourself to me and also to your brothers Mm -hmm. in your community? Because you have to have one with the other. It's not like, it's not like you really get a choice in the matter because for it to be a healthy relationship, I need you to be vulnerable with the extensions of myself that I've placed inside your life. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not, vulnerable and if you're not trusting of your brother that I put there for one of the darkest times you're going to walk through for one of the scariest seasons of your life like the list goes on then you're just going to put on a show for me yeah and God's like I'm putting these people there in your life because it's me in them yes yeah Mm. we forget that part we forget that it's God in them. Yeah. Every human being on this planet is carrying a piece and a perspective of God. Every single one of them. And when, to go back to what we talked about in the first part, when you deprive yourself 
of learning that piece or that perspective, you're narrowing your vision. You're narrowing your perspective of God. Yeah. I know more about who God is because I know Daniel Hennessy. I know more about who God is because I know Ruth Byers. Hennessy. Sorry. Ruth Byers died. <laughs> She's no longer with us. It's Ruth Hennessy now. But what you looking for? I was making sure we were recording. I I don't know why <laughs> when you, I took a drink, I was like, oh crap, did we did hit we record? Hit record? <laughs> we did hit record. We absolutely hit I'm record. sorry, keep going. No. And so like I have that perspective. Yeah. I can see God the way that you see him because I know you. Mm. When we don't take the time to get to know each other, we don't take the time to get to know God. One of mm. my favorite stories uh, comes from my ex-wife. And it was when she was first getting to to know God. And she was doing a lot of research and like going down the whole theology thing. Yeah. And the Lord spoke to her one day and was like, do you want to know about me or do you want to know me? Mm -hmm. And I love that statement because you can learn about God or you can get to know him. Yeah. And I think that we get to know him through the people that we get to encounter on a day-to-day basis, including ourselves. Yeah. If you don't get to know you, you're missing out on a whole perspective of who God is. Yeah. This has been a really good conversation, dude. I really enjoyed this. Well, thank you for uh, hearing me out. (laughs) Of course. It's what we do on Mosaic. Uh, Anything else on your heart? Um. No. That was it. <laughs> That's it. I feel satisfied. I feel pretty satisfied too. It was a. I feel like it was a good episode. I, it gave me perspective, and that's something I always need. <laughs> I always desire to be broadened in my perspectives. Um. Yeah, dude, we're coming up on the end of 2024. Yes. Let's step into 2025. This is, uh, episode comes out this Sunday, which is the third. Third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's tell the Mosers, man. November. My God. I it know. is November. And so this is actually the first of the end, right? We have the including this, including this episode, four left, four left, because because we will not be returning for season. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're coming uh, back. No, we're coming back. We're coming back. Let, let's let's reassure your nervous systems. Mosaic's not going away for long. Back again. Um, we will be back, but as of as a team, we have decided. That we will get through November and then December, we are going to be airing our favorite episodes and we're going to give a yes. little bit of, you still get a little bit more than the episode because we're going to talk about why this is yeah. our ep- favorite episode, what we enjoyed about this episode, and it's just going to be a little bit at the beginning, but December will be a recap of season one mm-hmm. and the like greatest highlights, I guess, or just things that we really want to showcase and talk about with you guys again and revisit. Um, Cause I think there's some conversations that are really worth revisiting yeah. and, and refreshing our minds on. Um, and so that's what December is going to look like for you guys. And so you all will have a very wonderful time revisiting those episodes and we'll take December off mm-hmm. um, and we'll start working on season two. And then we don't have an act, actual release date yet for season two um but it will be coming yeah and we're gonna we had a few uh couples on uh i'm thinking of two people specifically that we want to have on the show and that's going to be coming to y'all in season two i'm really excited for that and so 
what we're talking about is we met together as a team. This is a little over a month ago when we were doing these searching conversations. We decided that we wanted to uh, keep going on with this mosaic for another season, for another year through 2025. Yep. Because uh, we really feel that in our hearts that God is really calling us for the here and now. Uh, there are going to be a few other changes that we're going to do, maybe for clips and things like that, that are still going to be coming y'all's way. We still encourage y'all uh, to share these, uh, like them, post them, repost them, do whatever, share with uh, everybody in your community because we really do want it to be a blessing. Uh, but these two people that we're bringing on, uh, I'm super excited for, and we're going to try and get some more visitors and stuff. So when we come back for season two, it's going to be, uh, you're going to see what's the right word rejuvenated yes so yeah rested yeah rested restored renewed and uh there's a tons of like even in personally lives and stuff there's like changes and things like that and so i know that everybody knows sam's in school right now like all these crazy things right now so i'm super excited for season two yeah and uh the the things that are coming so i i can't wait to share with our whole community it's gonna be so good I'm super excited about it as well. And so thank you guys for choosing to rock with us. Thank you guys for going on these journeys to having these conversations with us and being a part of Mosaic, being part of Shard Nation. Um, We love you guys. And until the next episode.